Hello. Today I will talk briefly about the German statesman Gustav Stresemann, who became a dominant figure in German politics in the 1920s. Born in Berlin in 1878, Stresemann was the youngest of seven children in a family of middling means. His father bottled and distributed beer. An excellent student, he later studied political economy at the University of Berlin, edited a student newspaper, and started to develop his own distinctive political stance of what was then liberal nationalism. He later transferred to the University of Leipzig, where he completed his doctorate on the bottled beer industry. He then went into business. In 1903, he married Kat Kleefeld, the daughter of a wealthy Berlin business family of Jewish descent. His brother-in-law, Kurt von Kleefeld, was the last person to be ennobled before the collapse of the German Empire in 1918. Already active in local politics in Saxony, he was elected to the Reichstag as a member of the National Liberal Party in 1907, moving more to the right during the war, and in the confused period immediately after the war, reconfiguring his own party in more conservative mode as the German People's Party, the DVP. In the terrible year of crises in 1923, when Germany faced the combined impact of the Ruhr crisis and economic collapse, Stresemann was appointed Chancellor of a grand coalition government, serving also as Foreign Minister. Although only Chancellor for a little over three months, from August and November 1923, he oversaw a fundamental shift in German policy which had a massive impact. Even after losing the Chancellorship, when he lost coalition support, he remained as Foreign Minister under a succession of nine governments and was a dominant voice in all of them until his death in October 1929, at the young age of 51. By 1923, Stresemann had become reconciled to the Weimar Republic, which he had initially opposed. He also had become convinced of the need for compromise to secure his basic goals for Germany. Only by reaching an understanding with the Allies would it be possible to achieve the liberation of German national territory from foreign occupation and be able to focus on rebuilding the economy. The hand of the strangler had to be removed from the German throat. Under his leadership, a dual policy was adopted, cooperation with the Allies and reform and stabilization of the German financial system. These measures led to an almost immediate easing of the situation and were reinforced by the acceptance of the Dawes Plan in 1924, whereby the schedule of reparation payments was eased and a massive American loan was made to the Germans. Next, in order to avoid the reanimation of a joint Franco-British alliance against Germany, he proposed international negotiations, which led to the Locarno Conference of October 1925 and the Rhineland Pact, whereby Germany, France and Belgium made mutual assurances of non-aggression, with Britain and Italy acting as guarantors. The Locarno Pact marked the voluntary German acceptance of its new western borders imposed by the Versailles Treaty, and essentially a return to amiable relations between the Western European powers. Stresemann and his friend, the French Foreign Minister Aristide Briand, were honoured for this accomplishment by the award of the Nobel Peace Prize to them jointly in 1926, and in the same year Germany was admitted to the League of Nations as a permanent member of its dominating council. In 1926, Stresemann also signed a treaty reaffirming and strengthening friendly relations with the Soviet Union, but significantly not with Poland, the main beneficiary of the transfer of German lands in 1919, and which he wished to pressure to return them. Stresemann played a key role in re-establishing a peaceful Western Europe after the crisis of the post-war period. He stabilized the Weimar Republic's international relations and regained Germany's status as a leading world power. Unfortunately, the Great Depression, which effectively began in the very month of his death in October 1929, rapidly undermined his achievements and within a few years his style of constructive pragmatism was abandoned to be replaced by an aggressive extremism. 
His widow and one of his sons fled Nazi Germany in 1939 to join another son in the United States. Thank you for listening.